Hi, Dan Lynch again with the Pennsylvania Game Commission. Today's forensics activity has to do with making your own wildlife forensics kit. So the items that I'm going to show you today are things that you might have around the house or you could get at a hardware store or possibly even a dollar store. So it's not going to cost a lot of money. But it's some cool things that you can do that you can put together that are similar to things that game wardens have uh, when they go out and do wildlife forensics activities. So let's talk a little bit about some of the things that I have on the table. We're going to be collecting things. That's what game wardens do. They collect evidence, trace evidence, very small pieces of evidence. They might collect shotgun shells or spent rifle shells or maybe they look for a bullet or they're looking for hair or items that might be stuck on somebody's boot or their tires. And so you're going to need some sort of bags to collect things. So I have two different types. I've got, you know, typical plastic bags. The, the deal is with plastic bags, though, is you want to make sure that you never put anything wet inside them. Uh, because if you put it in uh, something wet inside your piece of evidence and you seal it shut, it's going to mold. So that's something you want to make sure that you don't ruin your evidence by putting anything wet inside a, a plastic bag. So if you have something wet, uh, you want to use some sort of a manila envelope or just a regular old envelope that you would mail things in. Um, that way, if it's wet, it'll dry in there, but the evidence will still be in there. And you can just write on the outside exactly what, you know, is inside. So um, I use just some labels here, and so I've got some deer hair in this particular one, uh, pine cones, pine needles, uh, a shotgun wad. Those are just some examples of things um, that you might want to collect um, and store. So when you're collecting these things, all of those things that I showed right there, uh, they're not toxic, they're not going to hurt you or anything like that. But if you do end up picking up anything um, that you're not quite sure of, make sure for safety's sake that you're going to wear some sort of uh, nitrile gloves or latex gloves when you do that. So since you're picking up tiny little things, you've got to be able to see them. Sometimes it's, it's very difficult, the things are very, very small. So inside your kit, if you had some sort of a magnifying lens, and I've got two examples here, really inexpensive, those are cool things for a forensics kit. To pick up those things, tweezers. Uh, you can either use plastic ones like these or metal tweezers. They're pretty simple to, to get and an easy thing to keep in your kit. I just happen to have a thermometer in mind. You know, I could take it out and I could just record the ambient temperature, the air temperature. At home, you're probably not going to be doing any forensics things with, with actual dead animals, but real forensic investigators are going to be trying to determine time of death. So they're, they're going to use a meat thermometer in the muscle, but we're not suggesting that you do that on a home kit. Um, depending on what the item is, you might need a pair of scissors to cut it to make it smaller. Um, for recording information on your, on your, your crime scene, if that's what you're going to do, you might want to have an idea of you know, where you are or what direction some the tracks go. So a compass, learning how to use a compass is a great idea. Having a compass inside there would be good. Um, you're going to probably need to measure things. So, you know, something that's going to fit inside the kit would be a ruler. You might want to have a small tape measure. That would be a great thing to, to include in there. Something where you can do it in millimeters and in inches. A notepad, some pens. Um, these are um, shish kebab sticks that you could buy pretty cheaply at, at a, har a grocery store. Uh, but what you can do, and what I did, is I had a can of paint, and this one happens to be yellow. And I just dipped them in the can of paint, and now I've got individual markers. So if I wanted to follow a set of tracks in the woods, and I wanted to be able to show somebody else the trail, I could take one of these and put it at the back side or the front side of each track, whether it's a person's track or an animal's track. And then when I'm done, I could kind of step back, and I could actually see the trail. So that's kind of a cool thing to do to, to learn when, when you're doing some tracking uh, for either a person or an animal. And these are really inexpensive to make. And you know, you could put a, a much brighter color on there as well so you can see it better in the woods. Flashlight's a great idea to have. Maybe you're going to mark some sort of evidence somewhere. So a roll of ribbon, orange or blue ribbon is a great idea. Sometimes you need to label things. So just uh, masking tape's a great idea. And then, you know, besides collecting things in bags and in envelopes, Maybe you, you want to keep them for a longer time and you want to be able to display them or show them. So having some glass vials are a great idea, and I've got different ones labeled with things on here. Um, you know, you can also use just a Tupperware container, too. Um, so there's really simple things that you can do 
um, and collect at home, to kind of put your own forensics kit together, um, and then go out and collect things. Obviously, you're not allowed to collect uh, feathers um, unless you know you would have a, uh, it was somebody in your family who would legally hunted a turkey or a pheasant or a grouse, um, and you could have those feathers, but uh, you're not allowed unless you have a permit to collect those kinds of things. But let's say you found some deer hair or something alongside the road, uh, you could put that kind of evidence in one of your collections and have a, a pretty cool collection of evidence for your forensics kit. And any kind of container really work. Um, you know, this pretty much everything I have here is going to fit inside this tiny little plastic container, which you can label. Kind of a cool thing to do. Um, what we're going to talk about in a little bit is collecting fingerprints, which is also kind of a cool thing to do. Um, and we'll explain that in the next segment.